Welcome to yet another episode of Juddy Productions. For those of you returning to my YouTube channel, I give you a big thumbs up and thanks. And for those of you new to my YouTube channel, thank you so much for joining me as well. In today's video, we'll be looking at radioactive half-lives and focusing on half-life calculations. So let's get into today's video. Let's look first of all at some terminology for decay half-life. By definition, it is the time taken for half of the atomic nuclei of a radioactive sample to decay. So first up, it is a time. Accordingly, it's measured in units such as nanoseconds, milliseconds, seconds, minutes, hours, days, thousands of years, millions of years. Application-wise, it's used to describe the radioactive decay of an unstable nuclei. Let's consider that at the start, at a time of zero, we have 100% of one particular isotope. We'll call that the parent isotope. And this is displayed in red. We can see that after a period of time called one half-life, only half of those red dots remain. The rest of them have been replaced by grey dots, what we call a daughter isotope. On the graph, we've gone from 100% of parent isotopes at time of zero, down to 50% of red isotopes at a time of one half-life. In our third image, we've lost yet another 50% of the red dots that we had from the previous image. So we've dropped from 50% to half of that, which is 25%. And that occurs after two half-lives. After a third half-life, we've gone from 25% to half of that, which will be 12.5%. And visually, we can see that there's now only one eighth of the dots are red and seven eighths of these dots are gray. So this graph demonstrates that with each subsequent half-life, we are reducing the number of nuclei of the original isotope by 50% or a half. That's why it's described as a half-life. Now a half-life can be as short a time as one billionth of a second, right up to values such as five billion years and everything in between. Let's now have a look at some simple calculations using half-life. First example, sodium-24 is used as a medical tracer and has a half-life of 15 hours. Our first question is, what fraction of the sodium-24 remains after 45 hours? So there's different ways you can do this. There's a mathematical technique and there's a visual technique. Let's look at the visual first of all. We start with our chunk of sodium-24. In 15 hours later, which is one half-life, we've reduced that to half its uh, number of nuclei that is sodium-24. The other half has decayed into something else. Another half-life later, another 15 hours, we have reduced that to 50% of the original, 50%, so that's down to 25%. And then another 15 hours, that'll drop it down from 25% down to 12.5%. Let's have a look at this on the timeline. So in terms of hours, we have our start point where we've got our sample of sodium-24, 15 minutes later, 30 minutes later, and 45 minutes later. In terms of half-lives, half-life is a better unit to describe our decays. So we're going one half-life, two half-lives, three half-lives, because each half-life was 15 hours. So in terms of the fraction remaining, it halves every half-life. So we've got a full 100% or one unit of sodium-24. One half-life later, we've got a half remaining. Another half-life later, we've got a quarter remaining. And on our third half-life, we're down to one-eighth. So what fraction remains after 45 hours, which is three half-lives, it is one-eighth. Now we can do this mathematically as well. So fraction remaining is what we're after. We're told the half-life is 15 hours. That's our symbol for half-life, T half. And the total time, capital T, is 45 minutes. So step number one is to calculate the number of half-lives. It's pretty obvious, but let's do it mathematically. To work out the number of half-lives, we simply take the total time and divide it by the time for a single half-life. So it's 45 divided by 15, which clearly gives us three half-lives. 15 goes into 45 three times. So to calculate the fraction remaining, we we'll use the following equation. The fraction remaining is equal to a half to the power of n, where n is the number of half-lives. So the fraction remaining is a half to the power of three. It's a half of a half of a half, which gives us an overall fraction of one eighth. That's a mathematical technique. Question one, two. How many grams of the original 20 gram sample of sodium 24 remains after 45 hours? So the amount is what we're trying to calculate. The original amount is 20 grams, and we know from our first part of this question the fraction remaining is 1 8th. So to work out the amount after some duration of time, we have our original amount multiplied by the fraction remaining, which is 20 grams multiplied by the 1 8th gives us 2.5 grams. 
instead of calculating the fraction and then applying it to the original amount, we can do it all in one step. This is the equation I'd recommend you use. Okay, we'd simply put in the amount as 20 grams and n equals three half lives and that will in one step give us an answer of 2.5 grams. Question two, part one. Seaborgium 266 is a synthetic element that has a half-life of 30 seconds. And our first point is what fraction remains after two minutes? So the fraction remaining is our question. The half-life is 30 seconds. The time that we've stated is two minutes. Now we can't compare seconds and minutes. We need to put them in the same units. So it's easier to convert our time of two minutes into 120 seconds. From that, we can work out the number of half-lives. So the number of half-lives is the total time divided by the time for one half-life. So that's 120 seconds divided by 30 seconds gives a total of four half-lives. So to work out the fraction remaining, it's equal to a half to the power of n, which is the number of half-lives. So half to the power of four will give us 1 16th. So after two minutes, Seaborgium 266 will have 1 16th its original amount remaining. Part two of this question, given its original activity was 32 kilobecquerel, that represents 32,000 decays per second, what would be its activity after two minutes? So just to recap, one becquerel is equal to one decay per second. So you've got high activity in becquerel, you've got many decays happening regularly. So the amount in becquerel is what we're after. The original amount of activity was 32 kilobecquerel, 32,000 becquerel. Now at this point, remember, amount can be used to represent the number of nuclei present, the mass present, the activity. It's interchangeable for any particular calculation because all we're doing is multiplying an original amount of something by a fraction remaining. So in this case, our amount is activity in Becquerel. So the fraction remaining, we calculated to be 1 16th in the previous question. So to work out the amount or the activity remaining after two minutes, we take our 32,000 Becquerel and we multiply it by our fraction from the previous question of 16. That leaves us with an activity after two minutes of two kilo Becquerel. We put 32 kilobecquerel into our equation. So our answer of two also represents kilobecquerel. Again, we could have done this all in one step. This equation would have done the same calculation. The original activity was 32,000 becquerel. We've got a half the power of n and n was four half lives. Put that all in one hit and it would still give us the answer of two kilobecquerel. Question 3.1. Carbon 11 is used for medical treatment. A sample of carbon 11 has a half life of 20 minutes and an activity of one kilobecquerel. Question 3.1, what fraction remains after one hour prior to this point in time? So this is a little bit tricky. This time we're going back in time, which means the amount of activity must have increased. So there would have been an increase in the radionuclei if we go back an hour in time. So the fraction remaining is our question. Our half-life is 20 minutes. We're going back a time of one hour, which is the same as 60 minutes. Now we have our half-life in minutes and our time frame in minutes. We could easily work out the half-life. So step one, calculate the number of half-lives. Here's our equation. The number of half-lives is equal to the time taken divided by the time of one half-life. 60 divided by 20 gives us clearly three half-lives. Step number two, calculate the fraction remaining. So in this case, instead of going forward in time and we're halving every half-life, we're going back in time, which logically means we're doubling every half-life. So to work out the fraction remaining when we're going back in time to a previous time, it'd be two to the power of n. So in this case, it's two to the power of three, which means it's gonna be a factor of times eight. So it's not really a fraction remaining, it's eight times greater than what it is at the present time, because we're going back in time, three half-lives. So part two to this question, what would be its activity one hour prior to this point in time? And again, one becquerel is equal to one decay per second, just a reminder. So the amount equals question mark. The original amount, that is activity, is one kilo becquerel. The fraction remaining is eight, so it's not really a fraction, it's eight times bigger. So to determine our amount one hour prior to this point in time, we take the original and we multiply it by the fraction. So here we had an original of one kilobecquerel and the fraction is a factor of eight. So our original activity must have been eight kilobecquerel. And again, we could have done this all in one step. When we're traveling back in time, instead of multiplying by a factor of one on two to the power of n, which would decrease it or halve it every time, we're traveling back in time. So we're multiplying by a factor of two to the power of n, which will double the amount of nuclei and activity every half-life prior to this moment in time. Last couple of questions. A sample of thorium-234 contains 8.0 by 10 to the 12 nuclei. The half-life of thorium-234 is 24 days. Question 4.1, 1. 
how many thorium-234 nuclei will remain in the sample after 24 days. Now, we'll be able to work this out logically. 24 days is one half-life, so half of it remains, which will be 4.0 by 10 to the 12 nuclei. But let's set this out properly. The amount is question mark, and in this case, the amount is the number of nuclei. The original amount was 8.0 by 10 to the 12 nuclei. The half-life is stated as 24 days, and the time we're looking at is actually 24 days. So first of all, the number of half-lives. Well, it's simply 24 divided by 24. That's one half-life. Step two, let's calculate the nuclei remaining. So here's our overall equation. We've got A is the amount of nuclei. A0 is the original number of nuclei. We're multiplying that by one half to the power of n, where n is the number of half-lives. Substituting our values in, we have 8.0 by 10 to the 12 times a half, which gives us a value of 4.0 by 10 to the 12 nuclei. Straightforward calculation. Question 4.2, the same starting arrangement. However, it asks us to calculate how many thorium-234 nuclei will remain in the sample after 48 hours. So the amount of nuclei is the question mark. The initial amount of nuclei was 8.0 by 10 to the 12. The half-life was 24 days. The amount of time we have is 48 days. So first of all, let's calculate the number of half-lives. And it's the ratio of the actual time divided by the single half-life. So 48 divided by 24 gives us two half-lives. Now let's calculate the number of nuclei remaining. Here's our equation. The original number of nuclei was 8.0 by 10 to the 12. We're multiplying that by half to the power of 2, which will convert to a quarter, which gives us an answer of 2.0 by 10 to the 12 nuclei. Our final question, 4.3. How many thorium-234 nuclei will remain in the sample after 96 days? So after the amount A, that is the number of nuclei, the original number of nuclei was 8.0 by 10 to the 12 nuclei. Our half-life was 24 days, and the time we're looking at here was 96 days. So step one is to calculate the number of half-lives. There's our equation. Let's divide 96 by 24, and that gives us four half-lives. Step number two, let's calculate the nuclei remaining. Here's our equation. A is the amount we're after, the number of nuclei. A0 is the original, and N is the number of half-lives. So we sub those values in. When we raise a half to the power of 4, that gives us 1 16th, and 1 16th of that particular number of nuclei gives us a value of 5.0 by 10 to the 11 nuclei. You've been watching a Juddy Productions video. If you've enjoyed and indeed learned something from this video, then please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching.